This place on a bend of the river was my home. It was a wilderness when we came here. In just six years, it became one of the largest cities in Illinois. Then it was left behind, abandoned. This place is alive with memories, joys, sorrows, simple pleasures, work and progress, peace and plenty, and most of all, the people who lived and loved and laughed here. We were happy then. It was a simpler time. They are gone now, but their memory lingers. And sometimes in the quiet of an evening along the river's edge, I can almost hear their voices once again. In February, 1839, we were driven from our homes in Missouri and crossed the frozen river to Quincy, Illinois. We were received with kindness, but we did not stay there long. Mother said she wanted to get where we could have a home of our own, even if we had to camp under a tree for a while. By May, several thousand members of the church were camped along the river in the region known as Commerce. The place was literally a wilderness, so wet that it was with difficulty a footman could get through but no more eligible place presenting itself. I considered it wisdom to make an attempt to build up a city. The first few months, sickness was common everywhere. All my family was sick with chills and fever. Sister Emma waited upon us daily to relieve our wants. Many died, especially the children. My poor little Joseph had chills and fever twice, and we expected he would die before the day was out. But the Lord spared him in answer to prayer. As soon as the season would permit, we had to clear brush and briars from our city lot, which was no small job, but the prospect of a home of our own gave us hope. We drained the swamp and cleared the land, and Brother Joseph renamed the place Nauvoo a Hebrew word for beautiful place. Things are improving daily here. The city has been surveyed and will be laid out most beautifully with streets running north and south and east and west dividing the city into four-acre lots. June 13th, we raised the first house built by the saints in this place. The city of Nauvoo is taking shape. Building up a city was no small job. 
We lived in five different houses in the first year of our marriage. All of them smoked or leaked. Finally, we moved into a small log cabin. It was the worst looking yet. However, it had the desirable qualities of neither smoking nor leaking. After we arrived in Nauvoo, many brethren were sent to teach the gospel in other places. The hardships and an uncertainty of what might take place during our absence produced feelings of no ordinary character. Addison was sent to the Pacific Islands. He would be absent three years. My heart felt weak at first, but I determined to trust in the Lord and stand bravely before the ills of life and rejoice that my husband was counted worthy to preach the gospel. Teach repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Then as the work rolls forward, we will see gathering to this place people of every land and color. Nauvoo will be a place of gathering for the saints. I returned from my mission to find converts coming in from all parts daily. There were not more than 30 buildings in the city when we left. Now there are about 1,200 and hundreds of others in progress. There are seven brickyards in the city, and men stand ready to take every brick as soon as they're cool. The place, wild as it was before, is now a thickly populated village. We first heard the gospel in Connecticut and determined to join the saints. We had to walk the last 800 miles. Our shoes wore out, and our feet cracked open and bled. But we went on our way, rejoicing to Nauvoo. Thousands of British converts traveled up the Mississippi to Nauvoo. They came to be near the center of the church, close to the Prophet Joseph. I knew him the instant my eyes rested upon him, and at that moment I received my testimony that he was a prophet of God, for I never had such a feeling. I cannot describe the feelings I had when he grasped my hand. I thought he was the best and noblest man my eyes ever beheld. He was strong and active and could build more rods of good fence in one day than most men could in two. Happiness is the object and design of our existence. And will be the I've been at Nauvoo and have seen the manner in which things are done among the Mormons. I attended one of their meetings and could readily learn the magic by which Joseph Smith has built up the society. They, they believe in him and in his honesty. If we first seek the kingdom of God, all good things will be added. 